Hi all and welcome to Cosmic Voice again on this, what is it, the 19th of November. It's nearly Thanksgiving Day. Uh, two songs there, uh, Let's Work Together, and that is more important now than ever. A um, lot of uh, issues on the page this week that uh, is uh, avoidable. And uh, the second one, Don't Fear the Reaper. And... Uh, that's uh, self expansive Don't fear anything or anyone. It's my motto. And here's the man himself. Hi, Drake. Hello. Interesting week. <laughs> Again. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there's uh, quite a bit going on. Uh, shit's happening at a rapid rate. And I don't know if everybody's watching or not, but uh, they need to be. <laughs> uh I'm not sure, uh, to be quite honest, how many people are keeping their ear to the ground. Now, I'm not sure how many people got their stuff straight, and I have less of an idea as to what's going on in y'all's heads. But I'm going to let you lo- let you rattle around in my uh, kind of uh, empty cranium, see how you like it being in there with the marbles missing and clanking. Uh, we're going to start out and bring this to bear in such a manner that I just hope everybody pays attention to it and yeah, I got some intel. Um, <laughs> this time it's uh, pretty in- pretty interesting. Uh, we're going to start across the pond in the Ukraine. Is still going on? <laughs> My goodness! And then uh, to bring it back over here and reference it, Ferguson. I want you to think about both of those. Just keep them in your mind. Then I run across this thing: China, dominant Asian power. Well, no. We are not going to have domination any longer. The manner in which this new uh, setup is going to work, don't give anybody that privilege. I want everybody to pay attention now. (laughs) This is stuff you ain't heard before from me specifically, but it's coming out. See, they want to take and say China, Asian power. The sleeper word is dominant. Now, who exactly dominates whom on the planet right now? Would that be the bad guys, the ones that want to play uh, without getting their fingers dirty, have us all go out and die for them, and uh, they can sit back in their AC and uh, enjoy it and watch it on uh, <laughs> YouTube? Then we got uh, the fun games uh, right here at home. GOP rejects warning on shutdown. Really? That's not what I heard. Uh, the people I've been talking to uh, stipulate that they don't want to shut nothing down, but they will shut Obama down. Now, that's going to get interesting. I want to see how they go about that. They're talking about the White House not being able to buy a paperclip without permission. Now, my suggestion is they turn that the, that the, uh, <laughs> the House uh, make sure that they turn off uh, the White House's lights and water and phone and, you know, you want to call somebody some fun and games? Screw up their credit cards so they don't work. I mean, you could have all kind of, all manner of fun with people, depending on how you do it. And then we got this other post. Putin's big mistake. Ooh. What has he been doing? Well, he's trying to win by uh, winning. Uh, but he's doing, doing it um, outside of the uh, system. He's not play, He's not going along to get along. He's saying no, and NATO just is beside themselves. That's like giving NATO a wedgie. I mean, it just, you know, uh, they can't stand that, and is Putin really a bad guy? Well, curiosity. Um, In the Ukraine, uh, they're cutting funding to everything. Um, (laughs) I want you you guys to be aware of this. Cutting funding stops all social, medical teaching programs, food, water, electricity, and gas, while Kiev is still shelling. Now, (laughs) dropping artillery rounds on them and uh, saying, uh, you guys are the bad guys. Hmm. Who is it that's shelling at uh, crash site continually, off and on, sporadically, and causing problems there? Why is it they they didn't want nobody to find any evidence? Woohoo. You mean they can't be sure that the rocket they shot that plane down with uh, totally consumed itself so that there's no identification possible? Is that what the problem is? Hmm. 
Yeah, I put that picture out. That one that shows the uh, fighter taking the uh, taking that airliner down. Better believe I did. And then there was the first thing come out. Oh, that's photoshopped. Really? Prove it. I hear no comeback on it. I didn't did not see any proofs. Consequently, yeah, and it's true of anything. Do you really believe that uh, if you take several hours of uh, video that you cannot uh, electronically spice it so that there is no uh, glitches, that we couldn't make something look like it's uh, something else, that we could not take a video of somebody talking and rearrange their words if you got them over a long uh, period of time and uh, say, you know, listen to what he says. <laughs> He's bad guy. Do you really, do you really, you know... Um, <laughs> Mercy. Um, this all goes to a thing called agenda. And everybody's got one of some sort. Usually it's personal, making sure you got enough money in your bank account to survive, making sure you got a job to survive. That, that, that helps, too. And no, minimum wage, Mr. Obama, don't cut it. Oh, we're making lots of jobs, and the unemployment rate is, yeah, right. You know why the unemployment rate is going down so so far so quick? real simple some poor mother out there trying to support somebody themselves and anybody else has to work two or three of them (laughs) it's not difficult to get this down i mean they don't say that those numbers are seasonally adjusted for nothing what are they seasonally adjusting them to well my goodness uh this is this that's that and we make that we're going to cook the books and make it look good pretty simple pretty obvious now agenda is a disease that is everywhere, and everybody's got one. Now the question is, or is it a disease? How do you how do you look at that? How do you apply it, and what does it deal with? These are the questions. I mean, what do you, what kind of um, stew are we making? <laughs> uh, racism, religion, politics. I mean, you know, you can pick down darn near anything. Ooh, there was a horrendous terrorist attack in a synagogue. Well, uh, so sorry, so sorry, Charlie, but when you run tanks through a civilian neighborhood without taking any fire and you kill a bunch of people, that, I think, also qualifies just because they're using an axe to chop somebody up. You know, beheading people's all right. My question about all that is, why is it, how is it that we're missing it? When I was in Vietnam, we used to return the favor. Yeah, you'd be a nasty mother to us, and we would show you what it feels like. I will uh, personally guarantee that if someone were to play the behead, behead you game with us in Vietnam, we had plenty of machetes. <laughs> and I did have one sword fight with an officer. The machete won, by the way. Um, even though the sword was longer. Machete was heavy enough that it cut chunks out of the sword until it got short enough that I could uh, uh, rightly divide the boy's attitude permanently. He'll never try to stick nobody here again, I guarantee you. But um, what you got here, racism, religion, politics, national origin. Should we have been in Vietnam? Hell no. Uh, (laughs) War is, 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 is war. What's it good for? Absolutely nothing, just like the song says. Pick your poison, spin it, and then fry it. Now, what the hell good does that do? Well, it tears things up, gives you the satisfaction of breaking something when you when you know somebody somebody or something needs to be broke, deserves it. But here's the question: that goes to a mob mentality, and yeah, everybody's seen it in the old-fashioned westerns where the lynch mob wants to string some dude up for whatever reason. And sometimes people stop them, and sometimes they didn't. Sometimes they stepped aside and said, I didn't see nothing. We had people on the battlefield that uh, (coughs) did not deserve to be taking up our oxygen. They had done things which put us in more extreme danger than just fighting the war. There's a lot of those people. Varying ranks, varying um, status, 
varying um, offices held, who were fed to the enemy. <laughs> um, it's not a good idea to take a giant dump on everybody just because of your position. It's not a good idea to take a giant dump on people just because you can. It especially is not a good idea when you base that on uh, some form of a personal prejudice that don't hold water. Yeah, yeah, you heard it. Uh, consequently, we uh, <laughs> there were people that just didn't make it back on that basis alone. Mob mentality, the riot, or a calm, collected direction of action by the whole. That's your question. Activity, action, or proactivity? One, you have two that don't have a direction. It just goes <laughs> like Manson and his lovely new bride. Helter Skelter. And then there's another song, Let the Bodies Fall Where They May, Let the Bodies Fall, Let the body. Yeah, all right. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, what about this? What about if there have been promises, public public statements made by officials? Uh, oh, they can recant. <laughs> they can tell you, they can lie to you and tell you, oh, I didn't have the authority to make that promise, but I did it so that everybody would calm down. Well, those excuses ain't cutting it. The calming down is well past. Time is not on their side. They're losing now. Um, anybody who's uh, ever seen uh, one of those old videos of uh, one of the protests will notice that there's black, white mixed together. Nowadays, it should be black, white, Latino, Vietnamese. Guatemalan, there should be a mix. Why? Remember, I keep telling you, common enemy. They don't care about the lower class, and you are. <laughs> you still do your own laundry. You are not so wealthy that you, it doesn't matter what it costs if you want it. Then you ain't got no ticket to ride. You are not a part of the, quote, uh, people who have the say. you got to go along with them. Get along. Do you? Um, <laughs> Neil Keenan and I have been working on this for quite a while. Uh, and what he has accomplished and is doing, um, I see as pretty extraordinary. It shouldn't be possible for any one person to be able to accomplish that much, and it's not. He has a great deal of, uh, in terms of a, a great number of people assisting, helping, getting this smoothed over, making introductions uh, or inter introductions to someone who can make an introduction that's critically important. Um, I'm basically known as the wild card. They're not sure what I'm going to do next. It worries people when I get on uh, on the air and talk about things. They're not sure what the hell I'm going to come up with next. They're afraid I'm going to name names. <laughs> well, there are some people in the CIA, some in the FBI, some in the NSA, um, and other places who do keep me informed. Ooh, now they're going to be scrambling like crazy. Go back and try to try to catch all them phone records. Who do you call to talk to? How do you get that information? <laughs> Good luck on that one. Sometimes it's uh, five, six layers deep. Sometimes, and this is going to blow some minds, Cosmic Voice, the stupid Facebook page that everybody likes to argue with each other on, um, is the motive of putting out the information. A little piece here, a little piece there. Something about this. No, that ain't the way it works. And Thomas, <laughs> just to name one person, has put up, been putting up with a huge load of horse shit for quite some time. Uh, so I decided to, get to start answering some things. Now, I'm not an absolute in terms of authority. I'm not an absolute in terms of knowing all of it. I'm going to tell you right now, 
I ain't no absolute authority, and no, I don't know all of it. However, I do know the basics and quite a considerable amount of collateral information dealing with those basics that have been in the plan and in the works since the 50s. Yeah, that's right. It's called the plan. It's been outed. It's out there. Everybody knows about it, and I've had verification. One guy was really... Adamantly nasty about, woo, that shit don't exist, you son of a. Mm-mm. Oh, he was upset. Oh man, I could, I could, you could almost hear the blood vessels popping on him, and that's through a Skype message or, you know, <laughs> Facebook. I mean, this dude is about to pop, and then he comes back in a private message and he says, "My good lord," I said, "What, man?" Uh, somebody got with me, told me to cool it. I asked them why. They said, come look at this. Huh? When uh, a commanding officer, and I'm not going to say what rank uh, or any of that, confirms directly to an individual and then shows them evidence of the existence of changes their mind considerably. That's kind of like some of these podunks out there say, oh, it's going to do like this, and this is going to happen, and that, 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 that. That's really... When was the last time you was there? Uh Uh-huh. Doesn't compute, does it? No. Well, there's a reason for that. Do you really believe you're going to let your kids play with a nuclear weapon? Play with the red button? (laughs) No. (laughs) Not anymore. You give a kid a loaded gun, go go tell them to go play cowboys and Indians with their friends. That's, you know, some things just ain't cool. Then you got the other part, and this is the fun part. This is where you get into the the issue of uh, information, like who's who. Um, and I'll get into that just a little bit. And I, anybody that wants to really check, they can find out that I've been in this for years. Uh, and my first thing was trying to understand what they, just what the hell you know was going on. It got five different people saying opposite things and I mean I didn't know I didn't know you could have a five sided subject but they managed it. I guess politics is sort of that way. You have too much of it and it makes you gives you double vision or something, you know. Uh and I wanted to understand and I wanted to know. What's the truth? How the hell do you get to the truth when you got that kind of a mess? Well, it ain't easy. It took quite a, quite a long time to figure out some of the things in order to get things in perspective well enough to be able to ask the right questions to get the information that you needed to have in order to just to understand and then discern what they were really saying. Even some of the sources I've got cannot come right out and stipulate. If they said something like uh, some of the things I know about over an open phone like this, an open mic, uh, public communication like uh, Skype or uh, something of that nature, they wouldn't live very long. Just that simple. Now, you know, everybody takes that, oh, yeah, right. Da, da, da. Well, I, over the years, I developed my own, got my own sources. When I could no longer stand it, opened my mouth. That's the, that's, that's the David Wilcock interview. I, I'd had, I'd, I was at the point where I couldn't stand it no longer. And um, it was something that was scary. And that that'll come here in a couple seconds, but there there's there's a variety of reasons for that. If you go up against uh the powers that be and it basically would rub against most of them, what I stipulated in that interview, um you're taking a hell of a chance. Well, I had gotten to the point where I had decided that I'll just carry a gun at all times. They want to play? Fine. To hell with it. Why? I mean, how can you adopt an attitude like that? It's real real simple. On a battlefield, it's you or them. And it's usually, generally, a semi-impersonal, not up close and personal, but impersonal kind of thing where you're shooting at people at a distance. That's different than up close and personal. This was up close and personal. That interview uh, 
pulled, dropped the drawers of a bunch of people that uh, really uh, strenuously objected. And uh, you would not believe the amount of fun and games that went on <laughs> for David and, uh, and others um, after that interview. Uh, the stress, tension, uh, interference, bullshit, whatever you want to call it, uh, got pretty deep and very thick. So, it's been years. I've been in a, in, been involved in this since, uh, oh, oh, let's see here, about 85, give or take. And that was kind of late, but that's when I, that's, that was about the culmination of uh, my general uh, training that I had with a person. Then I went to the the next step further and uh, stayed out of it for a while, had minimal contact, and then I got back in it a little bit because I started asking questions. And uh, <clears throat> then um, got my answers, as many as I needed, over a period of about two and a half years of heavy seven days a week schooling, uh, several up to eight hours a day on average, um, some shorter, some longer. Uh, I found out I had a knack for it. I can remember individual lines from of some 50-page report I'd read a year before. Uh, all this, whatever I needed at the, at the particular point, popped right up. No problem. And yet, the other part of the equation was, uh, how do I fit in? In what manner, and in, in what manner, am I uh, privileged to do this? How does that? How does all that work? Well, never did figure that out. My only suggestion is that uh, there's a lot of veterans I keep hearing that they feel guilty because they come back and other people didn't. Dude, lady, don't feel guilty. You come back for a reason. I'll suggest this further. You still have the same um, <laughs> the same patriotic zealotry as when you first decided you wanted to serve your country. Well, in in terms of serving your country, this time it's a bit different. We intend to set this mother free, and we can use all the help we can get. And my question to each of you is, what do you got to offer? I can offer a little link. I mean, you can go to the American National Militia website and look up the PTSD link. It gives you the tools to fight back, to regain control, to understand that you do have worth and value. If you didn't, <laughs> you wouldn't have come back. It's not difficult to understand. So, therefore, you come back with it for a reason. Now the quest becomes... What exactly was that? Are you supposed to do shows like what I do and, and out people and cause problems and uh, get into the political arena? Or are you supposed to help vets? What is it? Whatever it may be, whatever reason you come back, go ahead and find it. Start searching now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so the battlefield's one thing, and when you and you come back home and you find out <laughs> the war ain't over. Or you've lived here all your life, and it just gets worse and worse. The underwear keeps getting shrink, shrunk up. Things get tighter. The regulations get wor- get nastier. You find yourself at odds with uh, people you thought were even friends. And yet the only thing that is accomplished is spinning wheels. Well, then it's time to um, offer that this is not the most safe thing to do is to call people out is to be part and parcel with the people who are intentionally going to take them down and I'm talking about the bad guys um, <laughs> since I started the started this uh, my activities and all this um <laughs> Some of the people I've been in contact with, and either directly or indirectly, uh, some some people 
um, we're not just casual acquaintances or somebody you heard about that you talk to once or twice. Um, many of these people I knew and cared about. That's what screws with my head. And since I started, the body count is over 75. Yeah, that's right. A lot of those people that you heard of being wiped out were encouraged either directly or indirectly by me and others who understand that the only way to garner freedom is to shine a light on it. The only way to get things under control is to make damn sure that uh, it's not something that can be ignored. And this is the reason for the posts that I put out. Um, Some of the seeming simple one-liners that I have uh, um, added to the different little posts, uh, and some ain't so little. <laughs> some went out of sight, uh, went totally ballistic. Um, the reason that I post things that simplistically is not because anybody, uh, not because of what uh, certain people say that the American voter is stupid, or you are, but that the more simply I post it, the easier it is for anybody to understand it no matter what. And it takes all the capability of spinning it out of there. And no, uh, and I want this to understand, everybody to understand, <laughs> what part of no don't you understand? Well, simply, accuracy. And... uh As everybody knows, or should know by now, my oath of service to this country don't got an expiration date. When I signed on, it was a lifetime commitment. <laughs> a life sentence, as you, if you want to put it that way. And it's one that I enjoy, actually, because I've always been kind of patriotic, raised on John Wayne and uh, Audie Murphy and uh, whoopie de doo and raise the colors and run to the run to the victory kind of, you know, mom, apple pie, be in have. Uh, of course, I got a lot of, away with a lot of stuff when I was a kid, but you grow out of that. Find out that that ain't the way to act anyway. And, yeah, I look at people that do things that like what I used to do to people, to me, and I go, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that when I was that age either. Huh? But I did it anyway. It's just some things you can't resist. you got to jump up and down. Um, so I'm looking at taking it up a notch or two. Now, anybody that ain't followed, anybody that don't know what's going on, um, here's how it is. I have uh, stipulated finance for quite some time, okay? Uh, in case anybody has not noticed, the banks are broke. EU's broke. The cabal is broke. Oh, they may have plenty of cash, but they don't have the wherewithal to back it up. Remember that stress test uh, horse hockey they kept propounding? You have to have a certain amount of assets on hand, deposits in fist, in order to sustain certain adverse activities dealing with your financial institution. <laughs> oh, boy, what a crock of crap that is. Uh, I'm going to tell everybody right now, if everybody went to the bank... Everybody's got a bank account. Go to the bank. Take 20 bucks out. All of you, everybody, <laughs> you want to see some squirming, fussing, fighting, and, and uh, scratching? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Don't sound right, does it? Just 10 bucks, 20 bucks, somewhere along in there? You can take 25, 30 if you want. Um <laughs> And you know, no, it doesn't matter if you need the money in there to pay a bill. You can always redeposit. But if you do that, wait three days and then put it back in. You're talking about breaking banks. One of them would be Bank of America. Um, there was a rumor that came out about two weeks ago that I, I mentioned casually where Germany... Great Britain and 
France were looking at leaving the European Union. It's beginning to get stronger. It's beginning to be looking more like it's going to be or could be or may well very probably be uh, come official. Now, (laughs) um, (laughs) uh, and what happens when that, you know, that takes the heart out of the EU. Now, Bones Bank ain't got squat to do, to work with, not in reality. Now I'm gonna take this up another notch. There's a certain um, grouping of banks in the EU that are designed to keep the euro at a certain specific value. They're pumping everything they got into into it right now, as we speak, in order to try to make sure that it does not uh, go any lower. Now here's the key: at a dollar twenty-five. Uh, the European Union starts losing money. Now, this goes to indebted, compound indebtedness, where you got more than one debt, more than one place you got to pay, and the payments are higher. It's like before you get a bill consolidation loan. <laughs> well, they can't get one. Why? Because they don't have the uh, wherewithal in terms of uh, productivity to warrant it. Ooh! Think about that. So, That's one. Now, here we go with the cabal. The cabal is doing everything it can to try to weasel its way into getting close to, in other words, if they can find a general area where there would be a bunker of the collateral accounts, oh, you talk about sniffing. And I know you've seen the cartoon rendition of a a bloodhound uh, doing the dog sniff, (laughs) you know, running along the trail. You seen that one stupid dog? Which way did he go? Which way did he go? Well, <laughs> that's pretty much what happened when they tried to catch Keenan in the woods. Which way did he go? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> the uh, fun about this is that um, a lot of the things that they've been trying to do, they have not been able to accomplish. Now, there's been a few minor uh, successes. But nothing major, nothing that they can really honestly and truly work with in order to use it as leverage in order to uh, garner some form of control or specific action that would give them more control or help them out in what their ideas are. The gist of this is simple. These people want to, want to take over the world. they got problems in doing that. Um, many of the people that I've dealt with and that includes uh, prime ministers, financial ministers, um, several of the ultra uber rich, and I'm not talking about the bad guys. These are good guys. Um, <laughs> they've been given a heads up as to what to look for in terms of being able to see uh, the telegraphing of the punch they're getting ready to try to throw. It's sort of like uh, sort of like boxing. But it's on a chessboard level. No punch really thrown, but checkmates in the offing. You get to watch them. They'll sneak up on you. I don't know if you've ever played checkers with a checker master, but whoo! I tell you, I thought I thought checkers was simple till I got to play some of them people that was like interstate champions. My goodness! Write their write their initials in the board and laugh at you and get up and go away. I mean, you know, just <laughs> crazy. Um, I'm just getting word here on a ticker tape. Uh, Dick Cheney's plane had to turn around as they got word he was going to be arrested if it landed. Bush Cheney et al. have arrest warrants in some countries. My goodness, imagine that. You mean we got people that are supposed to be all that and are wanted? No, I don't really want them. (laughs) I don't know what they're wanted for, but I can imagine. Um... And then you got Kerry running around acting like the fool, doing the bidding of somebody that uh, obviously um, is so full of it. He, 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 <laughs> oh, it's like he's got butterfly wings and somebody thoroughly molested him. He ain't ever going to get his butt off the ground. He's going to keep bumping it. 
go in there and tell tell Russia that uh, uh, our president didn't mean what he said. Don't worry about that guy. We'll take care of him. Now, what does that say? Well, who's in charge of Kerry? Hmm. Um, is he on constant contact with Ms. Hillary? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, there's been a lot of uh, horse hockey going around, and I'm going to lay some of that to rest. The uh, United States military is pissed about several things. Uh, <laughs> I wish there was some kind of something I knew that I could do to light their fuse to get their butts up and running. But you have to remember some things. These things, uh, because of the complications involved, in other words, the survival of the people that might want to take the actions, you know, little simple things like that that, you know, might cause some, some kind of problems, um, due to that, those kind of factors, there are a certain set of circumstances, some of which have already been fulfilled, by the way, and some are to be fulfilled. And by the time that the, the second one is fulfilled, three, and, three four, and five ain't going to matter. Uh, some of the things that need, have been needing to be done are, should be completed. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever been around uh, heavy equipment when it runs by or... Uh, a big group of cattle or horses, ground shakes. War zones the same way. When the bombs and the and the uh, artillery rounds and mortar shells start falling like rain, Mother Earth groans and shudders and whatnot. Well, we're very close to the point where the stampede is going to take place, and you can tell. And this is going to be an early notice, early warning for everybody so that they can pick up on it. And it'll be noted. It can't be ignored. This will be big enough that it won't be something that can be uh, hidden in the shadows or covered up under the rug or any of that, where you're going to find um, a, um, I'm going to say, medium-sized group uh, less than 2,000 of them, uh, more like probably 300, three to 600 maybe, somewhere in that area. Uh, of these people that are, um, let's see, by position and um, because of what they, they uh, control, having power uh, to some extent, uh, when you see all of these turkeys all of a sudden decide to take a foreign vacation, um, then you know what's about to then you, then you know what's getting ready to happen. Now, um, <laughs> these are going to be the guys that don't have a clue that there's no place to run and hide. The, this, this, these are the people that are um, outside insiders. They're not in the the group of privileged people that know know what's coming and know that they're going to have to deal with it no matter what their position or condition or place they're at is. Um, there'd be a lot of oligarchs sitting there having a cold beer when the the good guys show up with the with the uh, stainless bracelets. Um, the The leaving will be a combination. There will be only a few take to the water. Most of them will jump a uh, Learjet. A couple of them are planning to um, um, rent, rent some kind of a larger plane because they have a larger group of people. Um, and these will be going to certain places that are supposed to be safe. Yet these people don't understand that we have already made agreements with the Governments um, and are willing to prove it. Specifically, the military. Um, is, the military is, is <laughs> more on our side than you might think. 
don't sound like it, but um, there's some things that have been instigated by by the military that look like it's something else. Uh, certain people have uh, changed what they do in terms of their office, their holding, their standing, their command, whatever. Uh, transferred, some some relieved, uh, some actually retired. That's it's been a while since that actually happened. Um, <laughs> and we got this. Uh, we still got this General Ham thing running around out there. Uh, if anything of that nature was going to happen, I would be informed simply because I reach enough people who need to know that I would be informed. Now, my contacts know that when something drastic of that nature happens, they are to get in touch with me. And there's a variety of ways to go about that. Uh, the emergency contact would be to give me a phone call. Uh, <laughs> much to the uh, uh, angst of the poor poor bastards that are going to be affected by whatever is going on. I've not been informed of that. I did some checking. It's all BS. It's rumor. Then you got this other thing going on about uh, interrelationships. Uh, I'm not going to name names as to who put out what. Um, but the interrelationships, and I have some people that are uh, well connected enough to verify, or denigrate, define, uh, and specify. And the specifics are this there is no official connection between me, the Keenan Group, and Associates, the people that uh, assist me, and uh, almost every last follower that I know of, people that listen to the show, people that listen to the website, people that get on Cosmic Voice, or whatever, to any of the agencies. Oh, there's a couple of shills I know of out of all those people. I mean, good Lord, there's, <laughs> we got, there are thousands of people who are really interested in knowing what's going on well enough to try to find some way to make sure that they're up on what's happening to the extent that they can actually get to the truth, uh, or at least a good facsimile thereof. Well, a lot of people don't take what I'm putting out uh, any further than, he's just spouting hopium. My goodness. The situation we're in right now is sort of like waiting for Dad to get home to whip your butt. Now, hopium is that he won't uh, whip your butt to the point where you die from it. Well, hopium is also that which uh, facilitates people to think that things may not be as bad as what they seem they are. Well, things are pretty nasty right now. Um We've had a lot going on. Keystone Pipeline got turned down. We're looking at uh, they, the uh, opposing factors and factions are looking at putting uh, wording into uh, certain legislation to stop, supposedly, prevent Obama from uh, exercising his executive order privileges, um, which would be, by the way, a treasonous act in this particular case, depending on what provisions he comes out with. Um, <laughs> he's already guilty of treason, by the way. Um, people talk about impeachment, horse horse manure. That takes longer than the guy's got left in office. Uh, you want to take somebody out? Let's start with treason. And yeah, you can run it all the way down to the House of Representatives. Most of the senators, et cetera, uh, are guilty thereof and may not hold public office, et cetera. I mean, you want to get into it? There you go. Um, a lot of the judges, to include the Supreme Court, have the similar problems. What people don't realize is that treason is simple. Anything that goes against stands in opposition to or denigrates in any way. Our Constitution is an act of treason. All them laws, legislation, and cool things you all have done, uh, you better start checking because you're going to be adjudicated for it. You're going to be put in, and you're going to be held, whether you like it or not. And no, there is no bail. Oh boy, do you like that one? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? <clears throat> oh boy, warm bologna and cold coffee, three times a day. Oh boy, 
the uh, military is pissed to a point where they're beginning to take some actions. They are assisting certain people in certain areas, and they asked me not to say exactly, so I won't. But just be aware that the assistance, okay, is getting active for several reasons. Number one, the military needs the practice. Number two, the practice of being totally covert so that the cabal, the bad guys, the crooks, and even in a lot of cases those in charge can't find out about it. And all but there you are rushing right now trying to figure out what I'm talking about. No, I hope you guys have fun. I mean, um, <laughs> oh, boy. That's like trying to find the egg on uh, – a certain day uh, that's got the $20 bill written on it. Um, okay, the uh, condition is simple. Within the next week, there should be uh, impacts of what's going on in the background. And I'm going to say within the next week, and that's kind of open. It could be a little bit longer. It could be a little bit sooner. And, it could be uh, tonight, tomorrow afternoon. You don't know. Depends on what happens with what's done. Depends on who picks the torch up and runs with it. It depends on whether or not somebody actually has the the um, unmitigated gall to pick the colors up and say, follow me, and run to freedom. You've seen the Patriot where that stupid farmer acted like an idiot sacrificed his kids and a bunch of other things because he didn't believe in it and then came around and said ha ha I will sacrifice all of you well I don't believe that it's like uh, the Ukraine it ain't necessary y'all in the Ukraine uh, government in Kiev need to quit it that's first or Russia and separatists you need to also stand down on that Offer and pro-offer a peace. Now, that said, you need to also take it to the next level and start working out a coalitic coalition, a coalition of activities that do not necessarily coincide with the dictates of either side. Yeah, that's right, down the middle of the road. The hard, and it's hard. Oh, God, it's hard. What do you mean I can't pull the trigger? He's pointing his gun at me. Well, just because he's pointing it don't mean it. Sure, go ahead. You got you can point your gun at him. You keep your finger on the trigger. He pulls his trigger, you pull yours. You eliminate each other. That solves a problem on both sides. We don't have to deal with your uh, stupidity any longer. Now, let's get real about this. Nobody deserves to be sacrificed on any, on any blood field, no matter where it is or what the reason for it is. Yeah, that's right. So... Um, of the many things going on here in the States, we have a uh, serious movement, and you're going to have to get into your finances and really look to find these things, but you've got some serious movement going on. Uh, you've got derivatives being dumped. You remember that pie in the sky, beautiful thing? Well, the other thing is that um, certain securities in certain forms are also being dumped. Why? Well, you've heard of one bad apple spoiling the bunch, um, spoiling the bushel, spoiling the basket. Well, you have to really take a look, but then all of a sudden, because of the mess that was created in that fashion, uh, Freddie and Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, the loan companies that guarantee things to the average person, um, and the housing authority decided to lower lower their standards to subprime. Great coogly woogly. They did that once already and messed up things really badly, and now they're doing it again. Now, that does not tell me that these people got their heads screwed on straight or have any clue as to what really needs to be done. Uh, You cannot have somebody working four part-time jobs uh, along with the wife or a significant other working the same, making enough money 
but not having uh, the proper look on the paperwork to qualify. Discarded. When you let in people who falsify on the documentation, uh, <laughs> at the behest of some of these people that are doing the, doing the paperwork, by the way, uh, and let them in. Needs to be the other way around. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Now, the home building industry has taken off in remodeling. They're not building new houses. New houses ain't selling, and the older ones are, well, kind of stuck or sitting there. Uh, the dummies in charge of the, quote, valuation decided to uh, play games. And one of the games they decided to play was, very simply, <laughs> we're going to raise the valuation of your house. Really? On what basis? Just because it's there? Uh, <laughs> that's sort of like them taxes that keep coming out. Just because it's there? Look what happened to Japan. All they did was raise the sales tax. Uh, they, they, it was a pretty good chunk, but they raised it, put them in a recession. Now, we're already, in, we've been in a recession, in case anybody ain't noticed. Since about 2005 or six, right along in there, it started going down the tubes uh, steady. Then all of a sudden, it fell off the cliff. You build up enough momentum, and the wagon goes down the road, and boom. And if it's loaded with explosives, it hits the bottom and goes kaboom. Well, it kaboomed all right. Um, everybody that knows anything about finance has been studying some of the things that I've stated and stipulated in private with these people, and they have found out that uh, I do got a handle on it. They are predicting the, some of the same things, and these are these are some of the people that um, I do have quite a bit of respect for. They've come out and it's stipulated that somewhere around seven thousand. They're not sure seventeen. They're not sure where exactly. Some somewhere in there. All of a sudden, things are going to go south. And <laughs> it's going to bottom out somewhat less than half. At 18, it'd be 9. So figure 8.5 for 17. Figure somewhere around 7, 7,500. Think about it. Uh, anybody out there can afford that who's in the stocks? Uh, is much better situated and or so filthy rich it don't matter. One of the two. Anybody that's into paper, by that I mean an investment, drop it. Cash out, take the cash, buy gold and silver. The reason I'm stipulating gold and silver, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but but apparently it's not going down much. Apparently it's fluctuating. It's sitting there percolating. When things start happening, <clears throat> the extremist drastic uh effects are gonna pop the pop, pop the bubble in terms of price. Get it now or forget it because you won't be able to afford it at all. Your stocks will go down by the same amount go gold and silver go up. And you'll find that you won't at a certain point be able to uh even cash out because nobody will buy it. I gotta, you got to look at this stuff. Watch some of the major people. Several of them have already cashed out. This is why I'm suggesting you do it now. I don't care if it's a CD. I don't care if it's stocks. I don't care if it's bonds. It doesn't matter what it is. Bonds been in the tank for a month. If that doesn't include you in to get rid of what you got in the way of bonds, what does? So be ready. Now, I'm going to come back with some uh, intel. Uh, I think we're yeah we're at the top of the hour. Thomas probably got some music for us. Yes, I do, Drake. On uh, this next song, uh, will likely uh, uh, be a premise of what's to come. Hi all, and welcome back to the second hour this evening. Uh, what was a very interesting first hour? Um, two songs. There, what a wonderful world! Um, that's the promise of the future. Um, hopefully, the sooner rather than later. And the second one is Creed, a lot of his finest, who's got my back now. And we'll bring Drake back in. Hi, Drake. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm seeing a lot of things going on, and. I've been checking these things against people I know that do know what's going on. 
irrespective as to what's put out by any form of media. And um, <laughs> this has got interesting. I've been finding uh, uh, that things are not as they seem. Everybody would like to think that nothing's happening. Well, that is not the case. There is a bunch of things that have taken place. Uh, right now, the military is in its final management um, shifts and, um, oh, let's see, preparedness in order to take uh, action. The um, <laughs> the things that uh, are going on that uh, you don't see um, are going to result in a uh, complete and total uh, financial reset now. This is not an RV. Anybody that thinks there's going to be an RV is full of it. And I don't need to tell you what. It's stinking and you usually flush it. So you figure that from there. Horse hockey. Um, the ideology, however, is correct in that there will be a world reset. Okay, this is going to be over a period of time, not an immediate bingo Ooh, I'm rich. Look at this. No, no, no. Uh, you're going to be limited in what you can cash in, even even after that. So I want you guys to be aware that, no, this ain't going to be the get-rich-quick scheme that has been foisted on everybody by certain people who uh, have already cashed out. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that you could do that. Well, if you were part of the people who got a ticket to ride, you could, and they have in some cases. Now, that's another act of consummate fraud. Uh, lacks equal protection of the law and a whole bunch of things. Um, the ideologies in terms of problems that we face are largely artificially made. Now, the ones that are not artificial are the ones I'm going to deal with here in a second, and I think you're going to probably like them. Uh, we have a an effort by a consortium of wealthy to assist all of us in um, garnering, regaining, retaking our freedom. Now, I want everybody to think about that. Um, one of the things about freedom is that you pledge yourself, your life, everything you got and all that to the effort. That's basically what this involves, more than a revolution, because you actually uh, can put things into play that a revolution can't. So the situation has improved on our side. You don't get that easily. Uh, you have to be um, extraordinarily straightforward and extremely tight in terms of uh, what the situation is. And I'll make a presentation to certain people, and they'll take that, record it sometimes. They'll take it then and uh, type it up, and they'll take it to people, and they'll say, what's the validity of this? They've been finding out that um, there's a few iffies. Now, by that I mean I'll stipulate something specific when it can be one of several things. The one I pick is the most obviously uh, acceptable of the choices available under whatever title that comes. In other words, I've told people that we're going to have a reset in currencies. Well, a reset in currencies and or valuation is such. And I gave a nice long spiel of this. On the Facebook page, it got wiped, um, but that happens. Irrespective, what it entails is uh, new currencies and or new valuation for cur existing currencies. It's much, much less expensive to reinitiate existing currencies or revalue, as this RV says, um, under a new system. Now, here's the problem with comparison between what we have now and what's coming. All of these currencies and valuations are going to be interrelated. And believe me, you want to get into a <laughs> you want to get into something complicated, you try that one on. How many current how many countries we got? Two hundred and some? And each one's got a different currency? Woohoo! You talk about fun. <laughs> uh, in the not too distant future you're gonna have some uh uh Financial problems um, that are predicated on certain legalities that um, those in power 
choose to ignore, very similarly to the ideology that the Crimea uh, <laughs> cessation vote was, according to the existence in terms of the Ukrainian founding documents, legal. Oh, they hate that, but it's le- it was and is legal, and it stands. Um, there are several other areas that are looking to possibly secede. I'm going to suggest that they don't do that. I'm going to suggest that they be, they stay involved with um, the western portions of their country because they may end up in charge of it. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people go at things. They start out on um, emotion and run into the phys- physicality of what they're doing in terms of of uh, gaining their goal. And when they gain their goal, they realize what's available, and they go, <laughs> now I got it. No. Um, <laughs> everybody, uh, and I can name names, um, we got a little island to the south of us called Cuba, and there's a certain guy that... Uh, made that mistake who's in charge of it so you got to understand it's not you know and this is this is a, a rebel leader okay and this is somebody who didn't have much of nothing all of a sudden he's got all of this available oh, wow <laughs> let him eat cake i got steak well it don't work that way he found that out he had he adjusted it to some extent but it ain't fully there if you want to have a truly a democratic society, each and every last person gets the same. That's something people don't understand. Now, if you want the freedom of a constitutional republic using certain democratic means in certain areas of it, then you have appointments and establishment of office where an individual that um, is so honestly tight that they squeak when they walk, in place. Oh, really? <laughs> Put me in charge of your bank and watch what happens. No, Mr. Rothschild, we're not putting you in charge of nothing. Sorry, no, that don't work that way. Oh, okay. So what did he do? Turn around and bought it. That's right. He bought the three banks that made up the, the lead bank for what his system was going to be here in this country. The best government money could buy. Hmm, interesting, huh? Been going on for a while, ain't it? Goes all the way back to before the Vatican existed. Um, you have to understand that these things are not going to go away easy. Now, a lot of people got this hopium of um, fairyland. Well, fairyland's all well and good, but there's several things we got to do first. Number one, we got to take care of our problems here, clean our nest. Clean out the bad guys. It's going to be, and some of it's going to be a war. There are some countries that are totaled in terms of this, supposedly. We'll find that out as we go. I don't believe they are totally gone, but then you got the other one, the interaction with ET. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be major. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they some of them really look funny, but you get, you'll get over it. Um, I think we got some freaks running around the streets that look a little more strange than ET does, but that's just my opinion. I, you know, uh, <laughs> bones in your nose and the whole nine yards and just don't. That that ain't my cup of tea. But that's up to you. You want to, you know? I, I go by what the song says. Hey, can't you see? You look funny to me, but I'm just trying to be polite. It's not. You, you got to get past the horse hockey. And yeah, each one of you gonna stare at the other and going. Wow, man, you're different for a while. You get over it. But the crux of this is this, and this is the intel part. The military is ready. Their position, the last of the planning is done. That's how close we are. Now, in terms of what else is going on, you're going to start seeing, uh, possibly yet this week, <coughs> first, uh, and by next week, I would assume and according to the information I've gotten, expect to see to start seeing impacts. And believe me, as soon as the impacts start, I'm sure we're going to be flooded. And yet what you want to wait for 
and you got to look for them. I right, got two lights I'm going to be putting up. One is the green light. That is the um, official notification to me that the finances are happening, and everybody can jump up and down and scream and holler and celebrate or whatever. Second one is a red light. That red light is a an alert to all the militias that the military is ready to do its thing and they are to be contacted uh, shortly. Now, some of the contact may come directly through me on the phone. That'll be a one-time contact only. From then on, you guys are on your own. I'm going to step back from it so that they can't monitor what's going on so easily. And yeah, they listen to the show. They listen to what I. They listen to me. They, can, they they monitor everything I send out over the internet. They're just lovely people to deal with, but they're there. And the fan club has exercised its itself um, just about to its limit. Uh, they did that last week. Now, in the near future, this is something everybody has not heard yet, but I've discussed it with a couple of people. Um, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to make some changes. I'm actually going to have to uh, spruce up a bit because we're going on live stream. Now, what this will do is this will make the availability of my dissertations, information of, uh, that's made available to me, uh, available to anybody who has cell phone service or internet capability, a phone anywhere on the planet. It'd be like a YouTube video. There's going to be some reasons for that. First, it's unlimited in the number of people that can view it. It's also unlimited in terms of the number of people we can have on live. And it's unlimited in terms of the number of places we can broadcast from. If they got a decent service of any kind, we can broadcast from there. And you won't have the um, dump us, interrupt us of uh, limitations of 10 to 15 minutes that you find on um, other services such as YouTube. The um, videos that are going to be shot are going to be uh, on scene. Um, I'm going to try to see whether or not I can get uh, uh, certain professionals to assist with production and things of this nature. But you need to know that that is coming. And that's the other portion of Intel at this point that I can uh, put out there. Now I'm going to come to Thomas and see what he's got up his sleeve to slap me down with. <laughs> uh, I'd like um, some comment um, first. Um, you mentioned before about um, stocks and bonds and the paper. Um, your comments on the G20 uh, accord that was set in stone on Monday, I believe, whereby... Ah. Uh, people who uh, put their money, um, and it is money, even though it's fiat, into a bank is will then be turned into a bank stock. And what are the implications of that? <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'd hate to think of what happened if the bank closed. It would be yep. hard enough to get your money out. I can't imagine when they have a bank stock. Well, the banks are... Mm -hmm. the bank, <laughs> First of all, it's a rigged system. Anybody that's watched Comex knows that the that the price of, of gold and silver ought to be going skyrocketing right now, up like it's going out of style. Why? Short on supply, great on demand. That means the value goes up. Same thing's true in stocks, bonds, and other things. Except that if you're deal dealing in monopoly money and other BS uh, Ponzi schemes such as the banks, you end up with a denigration in valuation. If you'll take note, and you've been watching the markets, anybody's really interested in this, you can take note and look, and you'll find that the banks have stagnated. Well, they might make billions of dollars profit, but what's the dollar worth? Oops. So, you know, you, you have to you have to be realistic about this, okay? Yeah. Um, to go a step further, this uh, also means, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, your money, which has been turned into a bond through stock, will not be protected by the FDIC. So uh, if the bank goes down, so does your money with it. And you, um, we've said it many times, uh, remove 
money from the bank. Just leave your bill money. Put it under the mattress, go and buy gold and silver, whatever you choose to do it, but don't leave it in banks. Uh, of course, the other thing is, if everyone takes the money out of the bank, they collapse in one day. Yep. And believe me, I, I stipulated 10, 20 bucks. That's accurate. Yep. I have, a, I have a friend who is a statistician. The boy studies uh, statistics, and he's good at it. And he's the one that gave me that number. Yep. So, you know, and he's always never, never missed. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to read something out now. A um, couple of things uh, for people's education. You mentioned uh, earlier about John Kerry, and uh, I've got to give thanks to Michael Sarian on this. Um, John Kerry has blue blood from all the royal houses of Europe with even more titled relations than President Bush. Burke's Peerage, which researches the genealogy, said the Democratic presidential candidate traces descent through his mother, Rosemary Forbes, to the royal houses of Albania, England, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Russia, Byzantium, Persia, which is now Iran, and France. Forbes was the descendant of William Forbes, the Laird of Newey, and the extended family that included many baronets. It is via this family that the Demo former Democratic candidate is descended from Henry II, the King of England, and the father of Richard the Lionheart, who was the leader of the Third Crusade in 1189. By contrast, Bush is related to Queen Elizabeth II, 20 British dukes, and many European princes. President Bush, uh, that's idiot Bush, not uh, senior Bush, uh, is related to Princess Diana and also Winston Churchill. Thoughts, Drake? Yeah. I'll be related to a whole bunch of them sort of people too, only they were on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure uh, people of uh, John Hancock. He's a direct blood relative of mine. How's that grab you all? Um Thankfully, Let's he's see not here. one of the ones mentioned. Oh, well, I'm going to mention something that hit you in the hometown. Uh, the Duke of Windsor, the bastard. <laughs> Guess who mm. I'm blood-related blood to? Um, we come from a long line of very old, uh, real royal families. Now, by that, I mean these are people that were not granted but earned their titles um, in varying countries. And what is interesting is that these are the the nobles or people that actually treated their people right and fought against uh, Britain <laughs> and uh, other entities that wanted to uh, consume them. So it's just a little bit of family history just to, for the fun of it. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Uh, Bush, idiot Bush. Um, related to 16 former U.S. presidents, a slew of British monarchs, and even the American Indian princess, Pocahontas. The uh, list of presidents is Washington, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James Garfield, Grover Cleveland, Teddy Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, and obviously his father. This is um, kind of uh, when you think of, of the history, where it's come from, and people think, oh, this has just been possibly going on the last 10, 15 years. This has been going on at least 400 years, all to do with the uh, secret societies and the Freemasons, um, and the Order of the Black Sun and all that look. I suggest people um, who are interested in that go and watch uh, Michael Sarian. He's very interesting. Hopefully I will make contact with him this week and see if we can get him to come on the show. Uh, oh, that's uh, very, very interesting man. All right. Are we ready for some questions, Drake? Sure. Sock it to me. 
Well, I better ask this one because he um, complained I didn't ask it last week. But um, here we Bold. go. What would you say, and how much is the ratio in terms of how many good guys are there in the military, the agencies, the law enforcement, the 188 nations, and the freedom groups to the cabal? Uh, 90% good guys, 10% bad guys. And that's uh, a little bit loose, not necessarily exact. But that would give you that should give you some time some type of an idea as to the ratio. The really true nasty bad guys comprise only about uh, three to five percent of the whole population of the planet. Um, here you have a few oligarchs who have uh, and are forcing people to comply with their wishes in order to get done what they need done in order to subjugate our freedoms, etc. You take a look in the in terms of what you see on the lovely mainstream media, <laughs> and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There's only a certain set of names that keeps re being regurgitated. Well, there are others who can much better fit the bill of the type and quality of person we're looking for to fulfill our needs in terms of freedom than what the mainstream media and others are putting out. Now, you have to understand, liberalism is a form of socialism. The problem is that you can't give away the farm and still have uh, food to eat. They don't get that part. Well, some of that in terms of that sort of thing is going to be drastically and radically curtailed. So be prepared, okay? Drake, you keep commenting on how the borders have all been redrawn. By whom and what does that mean? The New World Order had plans for borders as well. Is this the same? Why should we have to get along, go along with the new borders, especially since we haven't got a country and only land? Well, this get, you're getting involved. That's, that's about as pregnant a question <laughs> as I'll ever get, I imagine. But I'll answer it uh, very succinctly. <clears throat> there is a uh, council that only a few of us know about who are involved in determining the outcomes of our fortunes. And they have been growing in strength and number over a, period, a great period of years, uh, actually a couple of millennium. Um, this group of people take into consideration three things. Number one, uh, where would be the best place or placing of any sort of boundary? Now, this includes all the way from um, counties uh, and that sort of thing, all the way up to states, nations, etc. Then within that, you also have blocks of agreeable uh, entities, where a group of a grouping of countries agrees to something. Now, this would be similar to, but not nearly the same as, the European Union in concept. To go along with this, the uh, crux of it issues directly to the uh, safekeeping of the sovereign individual in terms of not having to worry about um, the fun and games intrigues and BS that's been going on. Uh, you'll find that, that the agreements that have been made are such that everybody, and I mean this literally, exactly, everybody will benefit both long and short term. This includes the sovereignty of uh, the rights of the individual to be a sovereign and to uh, hold stewardship of properties. No one, whether anybody likes it or not, owns the land on which we walk. That is the province of the creator, not us. Hence, and because of this, and because of the responsibility of husbandry of all of this, we are each going to be charged with certain responsibilities. Those responsibilities deal with things such as the golden rule, common law, uh, not having to worry about um, 
consummate thievery and other problems that have been going on either through agencies, uh, groups that have greater uh, either phys- physical, um, uh, legal, or um, money uh, powers. The um, One of the things that came up on a Facebook page that I noticed tonight, today, uh, sometime or another, I forget which exactly, um, was that what's the difference between the NWO, the cabal we got now, and this new uh, group of people? The difference is this. No one entity, no one person, no one group of people will be in a rulership position, period. Everybody will agree to this is best for everybody, okay? This may not meet the greeds of individuals. It may not meet the uh, wants and desires at that point of individuals or groups of people, but in the long term, all of these things can be mitigated, adjusted, and worked out to where everybody can be um, reasonably satisfied with the overall impacts of such agreements. This is something that's not happened before. This is where your borders begin to disappear. This is where you have uh, the problem of, and I'll give you an example, our neighbor Mexico has serious problems. I don't know what the hell their problem is uh, in terms of not being able to govern. What the hell's the problem? Had they ever thought of asking uh, us? Hell no. You don't want to turn to a crook to address another crooked problem. As we set this free, then we can free Mexico so that they can feed their people, so that so that you do not have to have somebody coming from the from Mexico up here in order to eat. I mean, good Lord, um, you know, watching your kids starve to death is not something I recommend for anybody, no matter how much I might dislike, dislike them or disagree with what they're doing. Um, the idea that uh, governments allow people to starve to death, uh, then go uh, about systematically destroying them, is something that will be forbidden. No one will be allowed to... Hold that level of rulership over anyone. It will be agreed upon. Who needs what first? Who needs how much of what? What can we do to make sure that we meet the immediate need, the short-term needs? Now, the immediate need would be people that are that they need food now. They need water now. Okay. What is what? What are the intermediate need? The intermediate need is to get these people set up to a point where they can start heading towards their own self-sufficiency. Nobody wants to be reliant in terms of having a nanny uh, patting them on the head, good boy, or kicking them in the butt, bad boy. Uh, yet you got all these people in the States that think somebody owes them something, and they don't. Know, nobody owes you squat. Sorry, don't work that way. Go out there and do something. These things will then also have to be made available that they can go do something. Productivity, okay, is producti- should productivity, whether no matter what it is, be directly related to uh, your capability of survival, or should it be something where, because you are productive, you are you are made sure that you are given what is necessary to uh, survive reasonably. And I'm not talking survival level necessary, but have some sort of a, a, a life that's not painful to live, that sort of ideology. This is where this is going. And it has to be understood that the uh, NWO that, you're, that is being referred to all over the place, it is going down. It's failing. It is rapidly uh, self-destructing. This is partially financial, partially physical, and partially uh, designed to fail. The ideology of consumption and increase in consumption or increase um, in inflation as a driver for an an economic system that is bogus to begin with 
is one of the biggest lies perpetrated. We have to change that in its basis. And remember, I stipulated and have stated this uh, multiple times. The very basis of what everybody is familiar with is about to change. And these are just uh, just a, a little hint or key as to some of the changes coming. Next. Right. <clears throat> the U.S. Donald Cook is an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer in the U.S. Navy and is considered one of the most powerful warships in America's arsenal, but which in the incident being referred to in this NSF report was completely disabled by Russian forces in the Black Sea in April. The State Department acknowledged that the crew of the destroyer has been gravely demoralized ever since their vessel was flown over in the Black Sea by a, a Russian fighter jet, Su-24, which carried neither bombs nor missiles, but only an electronic warfare device. Drake, do you know this incident is true, and is that why the U.S. Navy fleet fled when Russia sent a naval fleet to Australia during the G20 meeting? You got it. There has been a long history of attempt at superiority in weaponry. Uh, it went from uh, throwing rocks to spears and arrows, and then the firearms, and uh, then the rockets, and uh, then the aircraft that can uh, fly extraordinary distances at high speed, uh, and all that. Okay, some of the weaponry that um, specifically Hitler was looking for. Uh, not only has been found, but fully developed by Russia. And that is one example of it. Uh, I don't know how far spread that is, and I wouldn't say if I did, in terms of the uh, pro proliferation of those particular weapons. However, um, the two militaries need to learn to get along. Uh, there needs to be the simple understanding that they're both on the same side because they both believe in the same sorts of things. They have a tendency to uh, look at each other in an adversarial uh, manner, which has got to go. Why? Because we're going to all, and I mean all, inclusive, China military, Russian military, American military, and other smaller militaries all around the planet, are going to have to step up. Now, I'm talking active troops, not uh, calling civilians up for the National Guard or any of that. They're going to have to work together in order to, serve, to solve some of the problems. And the reason being is that there is an extremely large and extraordinarily um, complicated set of work that we need to accomplish in order to take care of the people who are already here. Uh, and as I said, these things are going to come up uh, in the very near future. Next. Uh, Alfred Weber posted that the Vatican and Putin are in this together and are really part of the New World Order. Can you set the record straight here? Just who is siding with who, etc.? Or is this disinfo this being fed to him? I'm going to have to tell you that um, basically you're, you've got some disinformation, some of it spun, and some of it totally false. Now, disinformation is not altogether false. This is where you put enough truth in something to garner the attention of people. It does not necessarily mean that it's right on. And... That would be disinformation, something that would would be put out intentionally to mislead, but not necessarily totally false. <laughs> Some of the information is so blatantly uh, incorrect that uh, I wonder at the sources and how they were able to get that stuff out. Um, Some of it is absolutely correct and right on. So there's um, there's a fine line. Uh, that's going to have to be um, brightened up, let's say. You know, they paint new lines on the road so that you can see them in the wintertime kind of thing. Well, um, in terms of what's going on, 
the uh, some of the adversarial uh, conditions everybody has been used to are vaporizing. When you find out that you're both going in the same direction, the objective being the same, and that the objective doesn't benefit anybody but all the people, then you have a tendency to be able to work together towards the common goal. This is what's going to be derived from the interrelationships. Um, I have spoken to people uh, such as um, <laughs> intelligence uh, leaders, uh, let's see here, financial leaders and others about these subjects. Um, I'm not willing to take certain people's word. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth, thank you very much. And that was granted to me. And I really appreciate those who did that, went out of their way and did that. Um, and I want to thank those people that volunteered the information when I asked questions. A lot of what um, <laughs> a lot of what people think is part of the programming that's put out by mainstream media from accepted official sources. You gotta you you really gotta put a load of salt on something like that first. Number two, you have to understand that there's usually at least two, sometimes more, uh situations that are applicable within what's put out. Most of it is a is a yes or no situation. Is this is this valid or not? If they really were doing that, what would happen? These are the simple questions you look at. And number three, uh, how many people do you know in any government, anywhere, that would be willing to um, do a number on everything for whatever agenda they happen to have? There's not many. So when you have something that comes out officially or supposedly officially or is reported, it may or may not have the validity necessary to carry its own weight. This is where you discern the difference between yes or no. Okay? Yep. And this is uh, the second part of the uh, question is uh, related to that, really. Is it a sign of uh, cabal desperation with the uh, trumped-up propaganda to make Vladimir Putin look like a me mega-villain-style deceiver? Of course. Yes. Um, I did have the privilege of speaking to the man, and I do appreciate that. Um, a very short conversation. Last just a few, just a couple minutes. Uh, the other... Um, portion of it is simple. Um, in the Ukraine, the civilians were being decimated by their military. Putin came to their aid. Now, a bad guy would have sat back and watched and probably giggled and laughed about it. He didn't do that. He took definitive action as a superpower leader in order to preserve um, not his countrymen any more than anyone and or any less than anyone else. The ideology is um, not something that uh, I take lightly. Uh, I see that as, as great, greatly important. Then to go along with this, his attempt to make sure that there was peace, uh, although grossly violated, he's still trying to maintain it. Uh, you know, when you have um, corruption stuck in place in terms of uh, leadership, you usually get the results. That's what uh, the Ukraine's experiencing. Now, if Putin's such a bad guy, how is it that the um, Ukrainian military is still shelling people? I'm talking about farmers, not, not armed troops, farmers. Uh, how is it that they drop these shells on uh, hospitals or schools or orphanages or, uh, you know, um, they just turned off, I just posted this today, they just turned off all of the support for any of the areas involved in the uh, uh, separatist movement or effort. Uh, that means doctors, nurses, 
uh, you know, uh, teachers uh, ain't getting paid. Food, water, electricity, gas shut off. I mentioned this earlier, and and there's and yet still they're dropping artillery shells now and again. Um, this does not tell me that uh, the Russians or Putin is the bad guy. That tells me that the Kiev government and those following those dictates are nasty. Uh, so you know, you you look at the obvious. It should be obvious as to who is what. Okay. Well, uh, aside from that, Drake, um, if Putin, I've had the same questions myself. There's always the the elements of doubt because you have to question uh, things. You know, are we being played along by Russia and China? And we've all asked that question. Yeah. But um, the uh, the ideals or the only thing left for the cabal and the elites is World War Three. That's the only thing that can keep them running, both financially and uh, collectively, and uh, also serving the Agenda 21 purpose. Now, if Putin was in with these people, he would have declared war in Ukraine, because then they would have got the World War Three. But yep. he didn't. Yeah, and people have to consider, consider, you know, put two and two together and make four, not five. Uh, there's far too much of that going on. Um, you know, I, I appreciate uh, it's difficult at times to follow everything, and um, particularly over, over the last four to five months, there's been a raft of uh, information that would uh, the previous four to five months would have been jumping for joy. Uh, now there's that there's that much information coming out. It's difficult to keep track of it, and and the majority of it uh, is in our favour. People must start seeing that. Um, you know, yes, it's gone on so long, but we, you know that's been explained uh, in depth many many times. It's not a case of just America freeing itself. It's the whole world. And you're dealing with uh, roughly uh, 205 countries, and there's so many players involved, and so many different levels, and you know, and then you've got the infighting of the elites, which is ongoing, and they're playing games, and, and pe- people just seem to think you just march in the White House, remove Obama, and it's all over. Uh, no, it's far Not from by it. Not long, Scott. So, um, yes, it's gone on long, and it's gone on long for, for all of us, but it's gone, it's gone on long before we were all uh, born on this planet this time. A long, long time, and, you know, you can't expect it to end overnight. Yes, we would li- like it to. It's getting closer and closer. The inf- information stream itself tells you you're getting closer. For those that can see it, it's, you know, it's fairly obvious now. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get some, perhaps, real action. I don't know if that's what people are looking for. Do you want to see it on the news? Uh, whether that's valid or not, hopefully the uh, <laughs> news will be replaced with something more valid. Uh, well, that's my reason for um, letting people know that we're going to go to the live stream is because some of these things that are going to be reported are going to be extreme, extraordinary. Yep. And there's going to be a huge load of people trying to um, garner our attention so they can ask their question and get their five minutes of fame. Yep. Here's the situation. You'll get, uh, you get an uninterrupted live stream broadcast of all of this when it happens. This has already been planned. Uh, I, I've already checked it out. It's not, a, not a, as much of a problem as people think. Um Anybody, as I said, who's got the capability to log on to it can get it, no matter if you got a phone or a tablet or computers or what. And the um, the interesting part is that uh, I don't like the weight club any better, any better than anybody else. I don't like just putting out hopium. Um, but people need to be aware that you have to watch everything that's going on in order to keep up with certain little directions. 
and certain little nuances and sidesteps and ooh, look at a little, watch that guy, he might hurt you, uh, kind of things that are happening in all levels of both finance, government, and um, political arenas. The 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 um, the crux is this: the United States is the supposed country of freedom. I uh, don't think it's all that all that it used to be, uh, and we're going to we intend to fix that. But it will be a focal point at the point that this country regains it and regarners its freedom. Is the point where some twenty other countries are going after theirs. Think about that. Twenty other countries. Woo-hoo. You, you want to have a party? There you go. That's a lot of hot dogs and hamburgers. A whole load of beer. <laughs> Next. What does Magellan's strands consist of, and does it originate from Earth? Oh, boy. Uh, Magellan's is, uh, was not um, made here on this planet, if that's what you're driving at. Number two, it's a uh, combinational inter- interdimensional um fibrous compound that uh, can uh, um, reinitiate itself uh, to a point of uh, carbonics. Um, I work with one of the top researchers on the planet in that. Um, And um, we found that uh, a whole recently some of the things that have been being done uh, by our friends upstairs as well as some of the changes that have been being made here on surface, have been mitigating and denigrating that. Um, I hope to see the end of it very soon. Uh, It can be reasonably easily taken care of, but it's not something that is uh, within our technical capabilities at this point. Okay? Right, we're at the top of uh top of the hour, Drake. We'll have a couple of songs and we'll be back with the final hour. Okay. Hi, and welcome back to the final hour this evening. And uh, are we ready for more questions, Drake? Oh, I guess. Uh, I'm going to break this one up a bit. Um, it's about three I'll or four questions. I'm going to break it up a bit because there's about three or four questions uh, uh contained within it so uh, surely the cabal knew that the rest of the world was up to in exposing the worthlessness of the Federal Reserve note Drake has said that they they have no gold or silver how is that possible Drake well I don't know if anybody's watching or paying attention but uh, the United States Mint ran out of rounds for minting silver coin. That's first, okay. <laughs> um, most of the lack of uh, monetary reliance on precious metals, be it the gold standard, silver, or whatever it may be, uh, has slowly um, eroded any uh, supply uh, for quite some time. The actual government holdings are nil. Uh, and by nil, I mean um, I could probably borrow enough to buy what they got. And I'm not no biggie or rich or anything, so go figure from there. And when I say they don't have the backing, they have not been able to continue what is called a consumer-based uh, finance of being able to uh, beg, borrow, steal, or acquire in whatever manner uh, more gold to back what they got going. If a currency, a currency, each and every last currency is under an agreement. It's an, inter- an international agreement of uh, specific monetary standard, uh, which is a, quote, precious metal and or uh, specific asset standard. Uh, that has to be met, or the currency is null and void. Whether people think we're off the gold standard or not, well, that's not my problem. Uh, you know, <laughs> go from there. Next. How do we know what they have in gold and silver or is it just the case that it won't matter once they are exposed, given that the old, the rest of the world made more, way more than they have currently? Uh, I've got eyes and ears in places people don't don't suspect, um, and I did my checking, and uh, I did this quite some time ago, and 
they're uh, pretty much uh, covered bare right now. That's how I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the other thing to it is look at the volume of what the East are buying, Russia, China, uh, and India. It's all coming from the West. And eventually, if uh, you keep, but, uh, there's only a, a limited uh, amount in circulation. And once uh, China and Russia um, reach a certain level, there is no more. And they're pretty much at that level. That is how you can tell. Um, Sirius uh, Dogstar uh, has a lot of knowledge on the markets and the volumes. Maybe uh, what someone can ask him. Right, next question. What is the deal with Kevin Annett? Is he purposely deceiving public to obfuscate the real war criminals, i.e. the Texas camp? Or is he on our side really striking at the heart of the cabal? Or perhaps he's being deceived and he doesn't know it? Um, hmm. Well, you're not really referring, uh, giving real good reference to what you're talking about in that question. Um, I would suggest that uh, anybody, and I don't care who it is, who takes on the bad guys, and it has to specifically be the bad guys, um, is basically working towards freedom. So if somebody, whether it's Kevin or uh, whom, it, whom it may be, doesn't matter, actually honestly strikes uh, in any way, shape, or form against the bad guys, they're working towards freedom. Now, it may be only a one or... Um, a one in a hundred post, but that particular point, you hit the nail on the head, I'm all for it. Um, I'm not going to speak for somebody else, but um, we can have the man, We can, I can uh, ask the man uh, directly uh, here in a bit to find out what he's got to say, and I will suggest that he's trying to do his best to bring him down just like everybody else is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The the only uh, well, um, from what we have garnered the nation to do with Kevin Annett, um, uh, is it a coincidence uh, that within two weeks of uh, his group implementing an arrest warrant for the previous pope that he stepped down, I would suggest not. And uh, two weeks later, he issued uh, an arrest warrant for. Uh, Queen Elizabeth and um, the person who uh, delivered it uh, was arrested but uh, released um, that was in April of last year how many uh, the people in the UK will tell you how many times has she actually been out since and that uh, is kind of telling so uh, the problem he has like is the problem with John Darash uh, has had is enforcement um, hopefully that enforcement uh, will be forthcoming fairly soon. All right, uh, next question. I just I had one. Right, we'll go back to the. I, I, I had one. I wanted to change the order. Right, we, uh, we'll go with this one instead. Is okay. Pope Francis working for or against the people? Is he and his papacy allied with the BRICS? Uh, now you're getting into a funky little territory. Um, <clears throat> the people I have in the Vatican tell me that uh, it's a two-way street. Uh, to some extent, yes, and to some extent, no. They've not finished cleaning house. Okay? So um, some of the things that look like they're being bad guys may be that they're being good guys and they're setting somebody up. That part I did not get because they didn't have that information. In terms of uh, the Pope actually working for or against any particular group uh, is also undefined at this point. Uh, it is defi It will be defining in what actions are taken. Now he has taken a whole bunch of actions that would point him to be pointed him to be a good guy. Um, if he can continue. And he, uh, and, he can, and he completes cleaning up the Vatican Bank, then we'll see which way he goes from there. That will be the defining point. Okay? Yes. All right, I found that question. A lot was said oh. about the, the pandemic drills 
in uh, NYC and New Jersey, then did not see anything anymore. One of the dates mentioned is November the 20th. Any thoughts on it, please, Drake? Well, I would say the best laid plans of mice and men have a, have some problems. Uh, when the secret gets told, it's no longer a secret. Yep. When intent and purpose come along with it, or the probability we got to watch them, and they don't want to be watched, the, they have two alternatives. Make sure that they sneak up on everybody, and that's going to be awfully difficult with everybody watching. Or uh, just, oh, huh, somebody said something was going to happen. I'm, uh, they must be uh, somebody that can't be counted on or trusted or relied upon. Uh, we'll just make them look like idiots and leave it at that. This is commonplace. So this is, you, gotta, you have to look at these things, uh, you know, very realistic. What would you do if you're realistically in their position? How would you handle it? You either go ahead and do it as covertly as possible and try to get away with it, which does not work very well in the mass murders and all this other happy crap they've tried to pull, or you just let it uh, let the date slip and um, let the people who uh, supposedly have in- inside information look like uh, consummate fools. Uh, they play this game with me a lot. Well, some of the some of that has been uh, taken care of. I found out who whom I can talk to to find out what is going to happen, and you know you can't stuff they can't fudge with. And this is what I've been uh, referring to in some of the posts that I put out and whatnot. Okay. Yes. Uh, to the person who did the really long uh, question, Fred Coper, I think we uh, answered that question earlier. Yes, we're all tired of the weight club, and you know, I explained why it's taken longer. And uh, and thanks for um, letting us know you appreciate Drake, myself, the admins. Drake, who is in charge of the Earth Defence Force that Captain K worked for in his 20 years of service, the Cabal or the White Hats? Neither one. <laughs> um, if it's not an ET, it's not in charge of Earth Defense Force. And if that don't answer your question, I don't know what will. Um, there's been uh, one person who's put out one post that I saw on uh, Cosmic Voice, and I answered it. I work directly with Defense Force. I would be informed so that I could either so that I could validate. And it would be an outgoing call to anybody who has psychic capabilities and the capability to understand um, the um, use of spiritual uh, activities here on the planet. Anyone else would not be qualified. I want that to be known um, in order to directly serve with the Defense Force. Um, I will be told at uh, what point we will uh, initiate the programs here on the surface to instruct, teach, and bring people up to snuff in terms of their capabilities at the appropriate time. This is the reason I've been designated as a voice both by people here on the surface and a a fairly large group of the ETs um, upstairs. Okay? Yeah. Um, Right. Alex Collier recently released an update letter in which he said in a statement that our solar system will be entering the galactic plane in a few years time I thought the upgrades from 3D to 4 and 5 were due to happen around 2016 2017, is this correct? I'm not going to stipulate a date Um, there are way too many um, extreme variables involved in predicting future events uh, we will, when we get to a point here on the surface, and we are pretty much ready to start learning and assimilating the information required of the uh, transition, then it, it will be imminent. Until then, it won't be. Okay? Yeah, I'm just getting uh, news uh, coming in. I think it's Pete Santilli. Um, apparently, uh, he and a person by the name of Manny Vega 
who plans to leave within hours to confront Barack Obama in Washington, D.C., and they're saying they're not leaving until Obama is arrested. Activists are on their way to Washington, D.C., plan to stay in front of the White House until Obama is removed from office. That would be fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> right. Drake, what good is the no fly accord when the cabal travels worldwide in high speed underground trains? Will all of the underground stations be covered? Do we even know where they all are? Yeah, we know where they're at. Yep. Yes, they will be uh, temporarily disabled at the correct time. <clears throat> you have to understand that uh, you can't just jump up, jump up and down and do something. Um, or it'll be negated. In other words, if we unplugged it right now, we don't have the people in the play in uh, correct position to make sure that it, uh, they don't have the capability any longer. So the situation is you wait until the appropriate time, and uh, then you make your move. Just that simple. So, uh, you know, enjoy the weight club. <laughs> Some of them were removed um, a number of months ago, from what I gather. Yeah. Legislation to curb the NSA has been defeated in the Senate. Would this not have been the perfect indicator to show that they represent the people? Have these government officials not been told to shape up or ship out? Uh, yeah, I've simple. told them personally, um, <laughs> and I know we're not to them. Um, my position and situation is simple. Um, all efforts at rulership, control, and all the other happy horse manure that's been going on is to cease and desist. That's first. Number two, certain people in certain positions are are going to be required to either do their job or be removed. And that's coming sooner than people think. Uh, this has already been uh, set in place. So uh, we'll see, um, as an example... Uh, uh, the unbeneficial Keystone Pipeline was voted down. Uh, then we've got the other issue that Obama uh, touted tonight. I'm going to use my pen again, uh, called executive order, in order to uh, play games with laws he's supposed to uphold. Now, <laughs> that overreach... Uh, will cost him any. He won't. The White House won't be able to buy a paperclip. I don't know if they're going to cut the, the lights and, and water off, but I would, uh, in order to get a message across. It's either we the people, or them, and they are beginning to understand that uh, relationship is the people are the boss, not them, and putting up with the ideology of. Uh, consummate socialism or fascist ruler rulery is not going to be tolerated. So uh, basically, Obama has continued in his quest to socialize uh, free America into a uh, covert state through his actions, and and has by his actions. Um, declared a state of war between him and the people, like it or not. Now, what you have to understand is that the problem in basis is that the man feels he can do anything he wants. Uh, he's supposed to try to circumvent certain, certain re legalities, but the problem is that uh, his oath of office stipulates that he is to uphold not denigrate, change, alter to his whim, laws, rules, and regulations that he's required to abide by. Thus, instead of an impeachment, I recommend that uh, he be offered the, the uh, choice of facing charges of treason and being immediately removed in chains or put the pen down. This would be my offer to the man. It's called a deal that he can't refuse. Next. 
Is it not a case, uh, the, the second part of the question, have these government officials been told to shape up or ship out? Is it not a case that uh, a fair few of these government officials are fearing for their life if they don't go ahead with the uh, executive orders of hi higher-ups? Well, I would suggest that would be the case. Um, because uh, certain ones that have stepped out have paid a heavy price. Yeah, well, we'll see uh, in short order. Yeah. Uh, right. Since there are billions of people in need, are we going to have to manufacture all of the free energy, biotech, healing, and replication devices, or will our off wheel friends make some rather large deliveries to help us get started? <laughs> Mm -hmm. My understanding is they're supposed to supply humanitarian packages. Uh, I was in direct contact with them, and they affirmed that. Now, they've affirmed other things that have not taken place. So uh, until I see it, I'll, I'll uh, withhold judgment as to whether these that we're going to get this, quote, uh, great help or assistance, as they have promised. Uh, as far as... Um, Manufacturing these things here and shipping them overseas, or manufacturing them in China, in China and Japan, and uh, disseminating them throughout the lands over there or wherever. Mexico could use this. Uh, South America. I mean, there's, it, it, the need is extreme. Look at Africa. I mean, good lord. Um, if you can offer uh, a humanitarian take with no strings, and that's something nobody's done in quite some time, um, then, you have a, then you have people who equate their loyalty to their survival of these people helped us. Uh, if they need something and I got it, it's theirs. Okay, this needs to be fostered between nations all over the place at the same time. This is where you're... Uh, so-called borders begin to uh, vanish. This is where you end up with, with no need for borders anywhere. This is the then a uh, stipulation of the realization of your standing as a member of the human race, irrespective as to belief systems, uh, uh, place of origin, or where you're standing right now. This is what we're striving towards. Next. Since we want to apprehend all of the cabal, are there biologic tests that can differentiate original beings from their clones? Other than putting all versions of the same person in the same f femur cell as a form of punishment, how do you go about adjudicating, sentencing, and punishing the right person? Uh, you're right. Um, there are certain tests that can be made. Uh, I know how to administer several of them. Um, the uh, question is not uh, whether it's going to be impossible, difficult, or, it's, uh, or whatever. It's going to be the extraordinary number of people that's got to be gone through. It's going to be the uh, extraordinary um, amount of work that it's going to take in order to implement these things and programs and see to this and find out about that and uh, – get with somebody that's so deep in the woods that it takes you 10 days to, to, to walk there on foot because you can't get there by air because there's no way to drop you down. Uh, you, you can't get there by car or truck or anything because there's no roads. You have to understand that the diversification of the population of the planet uh, is going to have to be attended to on a very realistic face-to-face uh, -face type basis. Uh, this is different than... Uh, what's been done before. Uh, people in South America were given tractors and, and uh, farm equipment. And the only problem is that their land looks something like West Virginia, straight up and straight down. Uh, you know, that makes that stuff useless. But we looked very good in supplying all the all that fantastic uh, uh, monetary-valued uh, stuff to this poor little country. Well, <laughs> tits on a bull. Don't make, don't give you milk. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. So what has to be done is what can be used? What can we do to uh, give people a hand up, So, not a hand out, but a hand up, so that they can then be their own person and decide for themselves 
what's right or what's wrong. I mean, the Maasai are being run off their land in Africa because some of the, the oligarchs want to hunt. Well, whoopity do. Um, maybe the oligarchs ought to stand, stand, uh, go hunt each other or something. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's unrealistic to me that this is happening, but it, there it is anyway. Next. Yep. Is the switch to full consciousness based upon our disruption of the psychotronic network of microwave ALF waves that are scrambling our ability to concentrate and think clearly? If so, Drake, is the disruption that will release us being worked on? Yes. And, uh, um, yes, it's being attended to, and yes, we're ready to do something about it. Um, that comes at a later date. Okay. Will the planet Aldec, which is known as the asteroid belt, be reconstructed and, and be much larger than before? Uh, that's a good question. I haven't asked that that one, so I, I can't really uh, attend to it in terms of what I know. Um, personally, I don't know that there's any reason to go fooling around with things that, uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of deal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's there. It's not causing problems. Um in terms of nature, I would leave it alone. Okay? Yeah, in terms of science, um, it's been uh, shown up in previous videos. There's a huge craft mining that belt. It may be useful for f further uh, for the future yeah. when we get, get uh, have space travel. Um Drake, are you familiar with Lester Hendershot, his energy machine, and his association with Nikola Tesla and Charles Lindenberg? Did Hendershot provide Lindenberg with an energy device which assisted in his transatlantic flight? Uh, no, he didn't use uh, an extra energy device on that transatlantic flight. Um, they looked for special things like that, inspecting the, inspected his aircraft before he attempted it so that the flight could be official. So that answers that part. Uh, yes, there are such devices, and yeah, I'm uh, familiar with Hendershot. And that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, if one has never been hypnotized, does that make them more susceptible to mind control? No. Is hypnosis recommended for self-improvement? Um, well, it depends on how it's used, uh, quite well, frankly. Who's uh, doing it? Well, hypnosis, hypnosis is relative to a trance state. The transient state of... Um, um, oh, Lord... Uh, the sleep dimension would be similar in some ways, but other portions of your brain are activated in your cap and capabilities as well. So um, there are um, there's a lot that goes into that. I would suggest you uh, take a look at one of my books. Uh, they those books lead you through this. In a very concise manner, and so in, in, and in such a way that you don't get lost or confused in the process of accomplishing the goal. Uh, there's a lot of little, I don't know what you'd call them, distractions or whatever that come into play that you don't that you don't need. And the other part of it would be that you need to be able to um, um, accomplish uh, what you need. And this is a personal basis. In other words, I wouldn't know about it. But the manner in which to accomplish them are contained in the books in such a manner that you will know. In other words, uh, it's kind of like uh, recognizing something before it's going to take place, a sort of a premonition, uh, precognition, you know kind of, kind of a situation. You will know exactly what you need to do in terms, to pro in terms of progressing. So... You know, that's basically the easiest way to answer that question, okay? Yep. Drake, can you assure us that those evil elitists still spraying chemtrails, still manufacturing GMO foods, causing false flag bombings, stealing land from citizens, etc., will definitely be arrested and held responsible? 
Well, I'm going to turn that question on its head. Um, <laughs> uh, would you uh, do any less than arrest and detain uh, some freakazoid of that nature? Uh, <laughs> any parent that doesn't want their kids sick might take issue with Big Pharmaca uh, <laughs> or the school system uh, supplying GMO foods. Uh, you know, it goes on and on. Uh, there's a an ex- in terms of getting a handle on just the information, that's going to be humongous. But if you really want to get into this, think about starting uh, from the individual point of view what it would take to rectify simply those problems, how big that is. We're going to need everybody and their mother-in-law, grandma, <laughs> I mean everybody, cousins. We're going to have to pull everybody into this and work on it. I'm estimating it'll take somewhere in the neighborhood of about 90 days to rectify a whole bunch of these problems and get them running in the right direction. After that point, then you've got to still monitor the thing. So, you know, the rest of that workforce can go over and work on the IRS records or something. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> it's extraordinary. It's huge. How do you dismantle something that is uh, integrated in every facet of your life? How do you um, attend to the... Um, just the legalistic problems, uh, EPA is going. The only thing they protect is their own butts, their paycheck. Um, uh, you know, FDA uh, approves poisons. Uh, good Lord, man. <laughs> you not only haven't done your job, but you're guilty. I mean, you know, how about you do How about you do uh, uh, two years of going out here and scraping, scraping dirt off this field with hand tools? I mean, you want you want to... You want to give these people some kind of realism, uh, to me that would do it. I mean, or, you know, at least, you know, to some of them. Now, other ones are so nasty that uh, I'm going to recommend their execution. That's just how it is. Next. Obama, in that people can be granted immunity anyway with his legal powers. How will this be straightened out once he finally leaves? Uh, you simply uh, legislate it out of uh, existence, or the next person stepping into that position negates the uh, executive orders. Just that simple. Yeah. Next. Well, that's um, uh, to the person asked the question. That's corporate rule. Uh, we will not be under corporate rule going forward. Um, what can tech types do now to prepare to get into working with replicators? Is there a program language we could start learning? Interesting not question. At, uh, not at this point. Um, when those things are when those things uh, come about, um, there's going to be a, a newspaper ads. I'm going to announce it uh, on air. I'll post it, uh, et cetera. We will find everybody that can um, assist. Let's say. Um, what we will probably look at trying to do is to set the thing up into a situation where you have uh, pretty much uh, automatic uh, uh, implementation of the finished device. In other words, it's going to be the setup that will take the work. Uh, then it ha- then you got to go and arbitrarily uh, check them and make sure that something doesn't need to be tweaked. I mean, you don't want uh, hamburgers tasting, tasting like uh, Limburger cheese. Uh, or you know, having the the consistency of rutabaga, or the, or even the flavor of it, uh, you have to understand that uh, replication, uh, in terms of what it does and the manner in which it works, is also an interdimensional type device. In many ways, it operates within that that arena of physics. So, uh, making sure that you don't accidentally uh, tell it to um over replicate let's say as a as for one of a better expression um you only need one hamburger not 10,000 of them and if it doesn't sense the difference uh it'll work until it's done that sort of thing so you know <laughs> there's going to be a lot into this okay would it, would it be not beneficial for them to study uh, the 3D printers that are already out uh, yeah, that will help some. Uh, what you want to do if you want to look at something is uh, study the programming. 
Um, the copycat ideology of the programming is something that has not by, been gotten into yet, where you um, have it make a device or, or something, whatever it may be. It could be a, something as simple as a ballpoint pen. Don't matter. Have that thing uh, print this dude out, this thing out. Simple mechanical deal. Then re- then tell it to do two hundred of them, and see whether or not the last one is equivalent to the first one. If it is, then the programming is okay. If not, then we need to tweak it to where it does. And this is similar uh, similar to the problem that comes about in terms of um, our um, bio uh, systems being programmed to screw our replication up. This is why we have our the limited lifespan that we have. If you take one picture, copy it in a copier, then copy the copy, continue to copy copies, eventually it becomes unintelligible. That is where the problem lies. Uh, if you've got some kind of a way to circumvent that, uh, this would be something that's usable. Okay? Um, Drake, I heard a rumor that the, that some god landed in Africa uh, a few months back. I also had a dream hundreds of craft were flying in the sky. The dream was repeated three times for confirmation. Could this A be a sign uh, that disclosure is about to happen? And B, who was the god and is he an E.T.? Well, my understanding was that it was Marduk. And I've done some studying on mythology and he's a, um, uh, a different god. Now, this is going to be this. This is a little bit of mind mind screwing, but uh, he is not Marduk. He's a different god that got resurrected into the, that form formulation that he took on, or the persona, or the identity. Uh, and as I understand it, he did a, he did uh, fall to earth in uh, <laughs> Africa. <laughs> And the poor bastard didn't have a clue as to what he was getting into because now he can't leave and he doesn't have his god powers. Oops. So <laughs> the joke's on him and he didn't know it was coming. I just love it. Next. Um. <laughs> uh, Captain Mark Richards. Um, has just done uh, another vid- interview with uh, Kerry Cassidy. I'm wondering if it's safe to clarify who, what, and how many different type of bad guys we are actually dealing with. Oh, I think boy. it's more to do with ET, uh, the ET ones. Well, in terms of ET, we got about, um, I'd say, as an estimate... Uh, somewhere between 1,500 and 2,500 races of them. We've got some 25,000 plus uh, to any number races of good guys that are standing there staring at them. Uh, So then you have the ones on the ground here who are playing the uh, holographic uh, I'm human routine. Um my understanding is that 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 is supposed to be negated. Uh, There's a capability of producing a planetary wave that will cause their holographic capability to fail. In short, some of these Lizardos um, butt-wipe thingamabobs that are not human are going to become fully viewable. Now, if you have not seen uh, that funky sci-fi movie, They Live, you should see it. (laughs) <laughs> because it's very similar to E.T. thinks it's going to be hilarious. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and so do I. I just can't wait. <laughs> uh, Captain Mark Richards, are you familiar with his uh, speaking, Drake? And if so, can you talk much about him? Is it valid? Um, a little bit. I know a little bit about the man. Um yeah, he's uh, valid to some extent, but not as much as everybody would like to believe. Uh, everybody grasps at straws. Um, they want to know. They want to believe. They want to have a absolute insider that knows it all. Nobody knows that much. 
uh, to be able to speak for everybody or to uh, supply the, cor- the actual correct information necessary, um, even in a description. Um, <laughs> you're going to find everybody Everybody on the planet is going to get the meat ET. Uh, whether you're ready for it or not, it will make me no difference. And no, there's no communicable diseases involved. You can't get warts or anything from uh, <laughs> buddying up with an ET. Um, frogs, that's questionable. Uh, the ideology here is that you're going to meet meet these ETs because we're going to become a space-faring planet. I want everybody to get that in their head, space-faring planet. In short, the things that you've seen um, from Star Trek, is a good example, and other um, forms of entertainment are going to become pretty much every day over a period of time. Now, it's up to us as to whether or not we um, can offer people that are mature, who are mature enough to handle situations that uh, pop up totally unexpectedly and are totally different from anything they've dealt with, very similar to what uh, good old Captain Kirk uh, found as he um, popped around the uh, universe exploring. Now, there are several modes of travel that are going to totally change uh, to include the planet. Uh, we can maintain vehicles, but they will become um, more or less uh, hovercraft at very low levels. Now, that does not mean you're going to fly. I wouldn't trust these people the way they drive today with with something that flies under any circumstances, but you will similarly hovercraft over the roads. It's going to be about the same thing as driving, only you're going to be wearing your tires out. Okay? You won't have to worry about fueling up. Uh, The ideology of having to use forced propagation for electricity is going by the wayside. Its conductivity is the secret, where you entice the electricity, and that's basically what the hovercraft uh, system I'm describing, uh, how it works. Now, you want to get into it, study the Tesla uh, car. His uh, nephew drove him around for like uh, two years, give or take, and it was electric and no fuel and it just simply hummed right along, no problems. So those are though that act, that application actually is extraordinarily easy. Now you can actually power a house off of the same sort of system. So there's a variety of different applications out there of what we can end up with, and so you have to look, you have to understand that you can't just put your all your eggs in one basket. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hover cars sounds good, except I'd make one ruling. All the people that drive Honda Civics stay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, a lot of people in Honda Civics drive like lunatics. And that leads us into a hover car question. Which is made of hover conversions for cars, but aren't those likely to go mostly unused in favor of jump rooms? Nope. Well, um, there's a variety of uh, things that go into that. You're not going to change everybody's uh, basic ideas as to what should what should be what should be done and how to act overnight. So, no, you're not going to get into the. I mean, jump rooms. Ooh, that's going to be cool. But you're going to have a lot of people out there that uh, are old-fashioned that uh, enjoy driving around. Or whatever. So that ha- I would, I will suggest it will be a slow integration process, uh, although rapid because you're going to have some uh, rather great advances in terms of being able to do things. But um, ET, and, I, and I'll, I'll give you a little societal uh, heads up. Really appreciate somebody who can do the things that we do in 3D now in our everyday lives. Those things that we do now in our everyday lives are uh, exceptional, and I'll tell you why. Things that ferment are not easily replicated. 
There's something about the natural process that precludes it being able to be programmed or something. They're not sure what it is. But so you're going to have to have somebody making cheese, yogurt, <laughs> alcohol. Um, the transition is supposed to lessen our reliance on things such as uh, alcohol, tobacco, and other inebriants. Uh, so the ideology of just getting messed up is something that um, will not rely on substance. In other words, right now, today, anybody that's really serious about getting messed up and does not want to do substances that uh, cause hangovers and other minor problems of that nature, uh, if you get into the ideologies of mental application and the psychic realms, you're going to get a bigger high and a greater rush and a greater Yahoo moment than you can get any other way. Now, once you start discovering that, then you don't need alcohol or drugs or whatever. You just sit there and go, and off and down the road you go. So these things in basis, as I've stipulated before, are getting ready to change for the better. In other words, you won't do yourself permanent harm. It's actually beneficial to get that um, uh, rush from uh, psychic interactions. Uh, so, you know, whereas with the other, you get hangovers and um, burnout brains and other things that you don't need or just turn out stupid over a long period of time. Um, yep. So you have to look at these things in a realistic manner and... Uh, Everybody will be taught this. This is this is to become the societal norm, where you have the capability of uh, actually having a conversation with your pets. I mean, a, a lot of them are, are uh, pretty interesting, actually. But uh, instead of having to worry about when you go out, uh, somebody having adverse ideas about what they're going to do to you to get your wallet, you'll know about that. Or it ever gets there, your kids will be able to tell when it, when they need to come in the house for their safety. When somebody is coming that is not what they should be, you will know the intent and purpose of an individual long before you have interaction with them. You will be able to tell uh, situations before they happen. I mean, there's a bunch of things coming that are going to be really uh, interesting in terms of what uh, the individual can do with them, okay? Will the IRS collect taxes in 2015, Drake? Well, um, I'm hoping and praying that we have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year situation that will preclude that. Um, <laughs> according to the uh, messages I get uh, from uh, uh, different uh, origins and sources, um, that's supposed to be the case. So, you know, uh, it could be that we're going to have a, a really seriously intense Thanksgiving. <laughs> One of those, oh, my God, thank you, Lord. You saved me again. All of us are free. I'd love to hear that and hear them bells ring and, oh, man. Uh, anyway, so, you know, from what I hear, uh, we're we're that close. I would love to see that happen before Thanksgiving. Uh, we got a few days yet. Uh, Lord knows. Yep. Um, a question earlier that was long-winded and um, a bit um, off the wall, but uh, I'll break it down and just ask you a simple question. Is Nasara an RV part of the same thing? Uh No. Thank you. Uh, revaluation is a totally, completely separate deal and will be decided by the Council of Nations uh, after the uh, cabal is gone. Um, the ideology of Nasera is most specifically um, designated to the states but uses basis in law that is international in its scope. In other words, instead of uh, when you sign something, you got to pay, 
uh, you initiate the quote credit or valuation through your through being the signatory, and you acquire the goods that way. And the valuation transfer is a little bit different. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. And we'll leave it at that. That's the end of another show. And uh, cool. do you want to say your final piece or anything Absolutely. else you want to add to it? Nah, I just, I just, I gotta, I gotta honor Larry, the cable guy. He's pretty uh, ate up and cool. So get her done. Yeah, I used to listen to him in when I was in the UK. Uh, I used to love his commentaries. Right, um, we'll be back next Wednesday. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show this evening. I hope you enjoyed the uh, intel that Drake gave out. And, uh, we didn't get to your questions. I apologise. Um, we'll perhaps do them next time. My name is Thomas Williams. And no, I don't sound like Michael Caine. Bye for now. <laughs>